Number 7. Mackenzie Anderson On March the 25th of 2022, officers in Newcastle, Australia responded to a 911 call in the suburb of Mayfield. They arrived at the scene within minutes and found 21-year-old Mackenzie Anderson suffering from multiple stab injuries. The woman's child, who was covered in her blood but otherwise unharmed, was found nearby. As a friend would later tell local media, Anderson had been left in critical condition after shielding her child during the attack and then clinging to life long enough to make sure he was all right. First responders pronounced her dead at the scene, where they also found and arrested her former boyfriend, 22-year-old Tyrone Thompson. He'd been paroled earlier in the month after being detained for a domestic abuse on an unrelated case. In the days leading up to the fatal attack, Anderson had called and messaged friends, claiming that someone was threatening her and her child's life. Law enforcement didn't disclose if Thompson, who wasn't the father of Anderson's child, had been the person issuing the threats. Earlier on the day of the woman's death, he'd spent several hours drinking and socializing with her. The former couple had met even though there was an active restraining order between them. Later on, Thompson broke into her home after he'd allegedly found out that she'd moved on with someone else. Anderson called the police to report the restraining order breach, but by the time officers arrived at the scene, her ex had stabbed her at least 20 times. Thompson was formally charged with murder, enter with intent, and breaching an apprehended domestic violence order. Today's featured fan shout-out is Instagram follower Life with Kelly G Podcast. To appear in our next video, take a pic rocking your latest merch from theywillkillyou.com and send it in to us on Instagram today. Number 6. Ella Crow British teenager Ella Crow began dating Liam Mountford of Lee, Manchester, in June of 2020, and the relationship soon turned abusive. Mountford's controlling behavior included accusing Crow of cheating on him whenever she went to visit her friends or family. The man, who was 15 years her senior, broke her phone to prevent her from contacting loved ones. On one occasion, he grabbed Crow off the street as she struggled to get away from him and forced her to crouch in the footwell of his van. In another instance, he threw her belongings on the roof of a shed and then bundled her into furniture, causing bruising to her legs and feet. The teenager became so distraught in the relationship that she at one point told Mountford she didn't want to live anymore, to which he reportedly replied by offering to set up a noose so that she could hang herself. Crow eventually told her parents about the campaign of abuse she'd suffered at Mountford's hands and he was jailed for several weeks in the spring of 2021. While out on bail in April, he met the 19-year-old again, snatched her cell phone and pushed her into the pavement. He then punched the rear window of a parked car and the wing mirror of another. Mountford pleaded guilty to coercive behavior and was sentenced to 12 months imprisonment, suspended for two years, in addition to being handed a two-year restraining order barring him from contacting Crow. Only nine days later, he sent the teen a love heart emoji on one of her Snapchat posts. She was shocked to see the comment and interpreted it as a subversive threat, fearing he'd come after her. Mountford was again spared jail time for the restraining order breach and given a suspended sentence. Crow moved to live with a friend in Wales to avoid her ex, who had 39 offenses on record including grievous bodily harm, racially aggravated assault, and numerous breaches of court orders. Number 5. Parkland Accident A horrific car crash that left the former couple trapped in their mangled vehicles was reported in late December of 2018 in the town of Parkland, Washington. The identities of those involved weren't released by the authorities, but they did share crime scene photos showing the extent of the damage. In what a sheriff's department official reported as a case of domestic abuse, a 34-year-old woman had previously obtained a restraining order against her ex-boyfriend. In the aftermath, the man drove his Volkswagen at over 50 miles per hour and T-boned her Honda. The side of the latter vehicle was crushed and the victim was left in critical condition. The 37-year-old suspect was also severely injured. 
as his Volkswagen flipped over against the side of his ex's apartment building. He was treated in a local hospital and then arrested by Pierce County Sheriff's detectives on charges that included assault, felony domestic violence court order violation, reckless endangerment, and driving with a suspended license. Number 4. Monica Marat 45-year-old Monica Star Marat from Vancouver, Canada, was granted a temporary order against her husband, Michael, on July the 8th of 2020. The woman claimed to be afraid for her life and that of the couple's eight-year-old son in the application and reported multiple incidents of physical and psychological abuse dating back to at least 2017. The most recent of them reportedly involved Michael consuming unspecified illicit substances and then choking her. Monica tried to make the order permanent on August the 4th of 2021, but Superior Court Commissioner Karen Sheenberg denied her request, citing insufficient grounds. Around the same time, Monica filed for divorce from her estranged husband. On November the 7th, he showed up to his former Vancouver home armed with a knife and holding a Bible and confronted Monica. The child subsequently went to knock on a neighbor's door shouting that his mother needed help. The neighbor went to the residence and yelled for Michael to get out. The latter ran out the back door at which point the neighbor locked the house and tended to Monica who was clutching a towel to her chest. The woman reported that Michael had cornered her in the bathroom and stabbed her multiple times. She later succumbed to her injuries. When the police arrived at the residence, they found Michael outside, holding a knife and with blood on his hands. He obeyed officers' commands to drop the weapon and told them he'd killed Star Beast, referring to his wife in order to fulfill a prophecy. He was arrested on a charge of first-degree domestic violence murder and a judge subsequently ordered a mental health evaluation for him. Number 3. Tirani Savage on June the 24th of 2022, Tarani Savage of Houghton Lake, Michigan, asked for a personal protection order or PPO from her husband, Bo. The woman claimed that the man suffered from mental health issues, had stopped taking his medication and had recently bought a firearm. He refused to leave the home they shared and Tarani noted that she didn't want her safety or that of her teenage son to be in jeopardy. Three days after the filing, Tarani's request was denied as a judge found insufficient evidence of a showing of immediate or irreparable injury, loss or damage. The judge informed her that she could file another protection order if she began divorce proceedings. Tirani filed for divorce on July the 7th, citing Bo's infidelity as a reason while also describing him being verbally violent, threatening to punch her and refusing to leave the home. In the filing, Tirani wrote, he told me I will need a PPO because I have no idea what I just started. Three days later, Bo launched a horrific attack on Tarani and her family. Using the legally purchased firearm, he shot and killed Tarani, her son, Dayton Cowdery, and her mother, 58-year-old Kim Lynette Ebright, before shooting himself. Today's topic was requested by Freed in 2006. Patrick Hughes and Agent O Fluffy. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Cindy Bischoff Cindy Bischoff started dating Michael Giraud, a divorced father of four in the mid-2000s, and they moved into the woman's home in Arlington Heights, outside of Chicago, Illinois. The relationship was promising in its inception but gradually deteriorated after Giraud began to falter in his job as a manufacturing representative for a furniture company. Bischoff supported him financially but eventually decided to end the relationship in May of 2007. Giraud refused to accept the breakup and started stalking the woman. Two weeks later, he broke into her home and vandalized it by covering all of her personal items, from furniture to electronics, in paint and clogging the drain so that the home became flooded. The man caused further damages with the total estimated at $50,000. In the aftermath, Bischoff sought and was granted a restraining order against him. Giraud was arrested three times in Cook County for breaching the order as he kept stalking and harassing his ex as well as her parents. The woman moved out of her home and temporarily lived in different houses, determined to avoid him. 
Bischoff kept detailed notes of every time her ex made contact with her, reporting the instances to the police and filing for more restraining orders. In the fall of 2007, Giraud was sentenced to 60 days in a psychiatric unit. He was released around Thanksgiving, after which he resumed sporadically calling and harassing Bischoff, even though the order against him forbade contact. Then, on March the 7th of 2008, he ambushed the woman as she was leaving her Elmhurst office. He shot her in the back of the head before turning the gun on himself. The 60-year-old died at the scene while Bischoff passed away at an area hospital at the age of 43. Speaking on the tragic incident in reference to Giraud, the victim's grieving brother told a media outlet that the law gave him too many chances. Number 1. Cheng Hai Xu in April of 2022, Cheng Hai-she, aged 44, went to the Cambridge District Court in Medford, Massachusetts, to ask for the extension of a restraining order against his nephew, 23-year-old Kong Wang. The older man, an accomplished cancer researcher, had initially helped the latter when he'd moved to the US from China to study computer science. Court documents indicated that in 2018, while Xu was traveling for work in China, his wife and Kong had started a romantic relationship. The woman then tried to end it in 2020, but Kong wouldn't accept the breakup. He messaged her, threatening to kill her family, claiming that she'd robbed him of his dignity and had left him a walking dead. He'd also threatened Xu, physically attacked him, and tried to force his way into his Arlington home. Xu and his wife got divorced in the affair's wake, but continued living together and took out a restraining order against Wang. The two men showed up to a hearing on April the 7th of 2022, during which a judge rejected Xu's request to extend the order. His attorney, William Barabino, later recounted that his client was affected by the decision, but added that he didn't, at the time, realize to what extent. Xu and Wang left the courthouse and headed to the lot, where they were both parked. Xu got into his Chevrolet Equinox and then drove towards Wang, damaging multiple vehicles before pinning him against the Toyota RAV4. Xu then exited his vehicle with a pistol in hand and fired into Wang five times, killing him. Barabino initially thought he'd heard construction noises but realized what happened upon going outside. He kept Xu, whom he described as a very kind and gentle, pleasant guy, at the scene until the police took him into custody and charged him with murder. Thanks for watching. Would you still date your crush if you found out they'd had a restraining order taken out against them? Let us know in the comments section below.